This video shows you how to make the Explore Roll light and the Explore Roll Adventure. These rugged tool rolls can be made of various fabrics and of course in any colour you like. Download the PDF pattern from createfixshare.com. Print the pattern on any standard home printer. For the small pattern pieces that fit on a single page, simply cut them out. For the larger pattern pieces that fit on multiple pages, use the alignment marks and then tape them together. Lay each pattern piece on the fabric of your choice, and with the help of pattern weights, draw around the edges with tailor's chalk. With scissors or a rotary cutter like I'm using here, cut each piece out. In this video, I use a standard walking foot machine for the straight stitching and a walking foot binding machine for binding the edges. However, a binding machine is not required. You can make this pattern on most medium to heavy duty sewing machines. And for the binding, you can simply use a low cost binding attachment like this. Alternatively, if you are patient and careful, you can simply use clips to secure the binding in place while you sew. To get started, use the pattern and cut out the stuff pouch in a mesh fabric or any fabric of your choice. We then want to bind along this edge. To trim the binding flush, use a hot knife like this or use a sharp knife to make the cut and then run a flame across the end of the binding to clean it up and stop it from fraying. Next is the top flap. In this example, I'm using red and gray fabric. Bind around this edge here. Trim the binding flush. Next is the tool slot panel. In this example, I'm using two pieces of gray fabric. Lay the pattern on the top piece of fabric. With tailor's chalk, make small marks where the lines will be, then draw the lines. Bind along these two edges. Trim the binding flush. Then bind along this edge backstitching at both ends to ensure the stitching is locked in place. Trim the binding flush. For the Explore Roll Adventure, we then make the two zip pouches. In this example, I'm using a red and grey fabric. Notice how the inner and outer pieces are different lengths. Make sure that the longer outer piece is on the top, and then the zip is placed like this, with a one inch overhang at each end, and then sew along this edge backstitching at both ends. Then roll the fabric under like this to create a finished edge. Then sew, backstitching at both ends. With one side of the zip now sewn in place, flip the zip pouch over. The objective here is to clip these two pieces so both ends are flush. Start at one end and clip the two pieces of fabric together. Fold over like this, and then also clip the zip flush with the two pieces of fabric. Sew along this edge here. Once this is done, separate the zip, and fold over to create a finished edge like the one you did in the previous step. And then sew. With both sides of the zip now sewn in place, you're probably wondering why we have all this slack fabric. Well, when you turn the zip pouch around the right way, the slack is taken up and both pieces of fabric tuck nicely together. Place the zip pouch like this. Take a slider, guide it on to close the zip, and shoot the slider off the other end like this. Open up the zip about an inch. Guide the zip slider back onto the zip and stop about halfway. Trim the zip flush. Close the zip pouch by sewing along this edge. Check the zip is working as it should. Lay the pattern on the main panel 
and prepare to make all the marks with Taylor's chalk like this. Then take the tool slot panel you made earlier and line up the right hand side along this mark. Clip it into place, then firstly sew down the right hand side of the binding, then down the left hand side of the binding, back stitching at both ends. Next, we line up the first chalk mark on the tool slot panel with the first chalk mark on the main panel, and by doing so, we scrunch up the tool slot panel and create a spacious slot for each tool. Clip it into place, and sew, back stitching at both ends. Continue in this fashion for the next line, and the next line, and so on, until you come to the end. With this done, we are nearing the stage of tacking all of the pieces to the main panel in preparation to bind around the outer edge. Start by placing the front main panel onto the back main panel and clipping them together. We then want to sew along this edge while tucking the bottom of each of the tool slots like this to close up the bottoms. Work your way around the edge of the main panel and tack all the pieces in place. Tack the stuff pouch, tack the top flap, tack the zip pouches, and finally tack the webbing straps. With everything tacked in place, start the process of binding around the outer edge. The only important part to point out here is that we want to start and finish the binding right on one of the webbing straps. When you've finished the binding, cut the ends of the binding flush and tidy like this. The reason for this is to hide the join in the binding underneath the webbing. To get the webbing ready for sewing, start by putting two small spots of hot glue here and here. Fold the webbing over and press it down so the hot glue holds it securely. Flip the main panel over and thread the webbing through the female side release buckles like this. Put two small spots of hot glue here and here. Press and hold the webbing in place until the hot glue holds securely. Sew both of the webbing straps like this, running back and forth four times for a good strong hold. Next we take our two lengths of elastic, fold each one in half, sew it with a 3 8 seam allowance, and then turn them inside out to create webbing keepers. Slide these onto the webbing straps, along with the male ends of the side release buckles, like this. The main panel of the tool roll is now complete. The last thing on the list is to make the pull-out zip pouch. The front of the pull-out zip pouch is made up of two pieces the same size. The back of the pull-out zip pouch is made up of two pieces with the outer piece slightly longer. Make sure the longer outer piece is on the top and then place the zip with a one inch overhang at each end like this. Sew along this edge, back stitching at both ends. Roll the fabric under like this to create a finished edge. Then sew, back stitching at both ends. Next, place the front pieces like this and sew along this edge. Once this is done, fold the fabric over to create a finished edge and then sew, back stitching at both ends. Separate the zip and guide on a slider about halfway. Trim the zip flush. Then fold it in half and bind around this edge. You can do this by hand holding or use clips to make life easy. Trim the binding flush. Check the zip and you're finished. You've now successfully created your own explore roll. You're ready to pack your tools up and hit the trails. Feel free to check out the other Create Fix Share videos for similar gear you can create yourself.